good morning uh, thank you for coming early in the morning and especially on the sunday to listen to my presentation uh, my name is atawar rahman as uh, the moderator introduced me i'm working as a postdoc researcher in yonsei university south korea uh, under the supervision of uh, professor jangun kim my supervisor is also sitting here uh, i've done this work under the supervision of my supervisor uh, it's uh, yonsei university so uh today i'm going to talk about uh, quality control of 3d concrete painting uh these are the contents of my presentation as you know the quality control for every manufacturing process is very important uh especially in the case of 3d concrete printing when where the material is very uh, sensitive to the environmental conditions uh, there are different parameters which influence our print uh, quality so uh, delivering uh, high quality product uh, to the customers is very necessary for customer satisfaction uh, the quality of 3d concrete printing as you know the uh, uh, protocols regulations are not developed yet the understanding is less in the industry about uh, this technology especially the quality control uh, aspect uh, quality control of 3d concrete printing we can categorize it into four sections uh, ensuring the consistent uh, production of the quality during each mixing time and delivery to the printing nozzle uh, once we deposit it at the printing bed then ensuring the consistent uh, structural build up within the material uh, third can be the consistent uh, geometrical quality of the printed layers uh, the, the pr what we are printing is the same what we have designed the cad model and the print product are the same Uh, third is the quality control of the uh, mechanical structural performance durability properties so i'm going to talk about uh, the part 2 uh, my supervisor will talk about the uh, uh, three uh, about the print quality geometry in the second part of this session so before going deep into the test methods uh, a little introduction to the structural build up as you know the structural build up is the transition of the material from the soft state to the hard state when uh, we take the material out of the concrete mixer by touching it we can feel it is soft if you keep it for uh, 90 minutes then when you touch it again uh, you can feel this transition in the material you will feel the hardness so the transition of the material from the soft state to the hard state uh, that is because of the structural build up now uh, it's very important in the aspect of 3d concrete printing uh because we print the layers on the top of each other so uh, the structural build up the transition when the material gets hardened its shear strength compressive strength stiffness those properties increase and it can take more uh, layers on the top of it uh as i mentioned like we can feel the material by touching now what we touch this is a very qualitative measurement of a material it's a sensory measurement the soft is different for me the soft one for, for one of you is a different so we need to quantify this state of the material on some on some, in some numbers on some scale uh, so instead of just focusing on the uh, just uh, relying on the, uh, qualitative numbers we need quantitative numbers on some scale uh, uh, compared to conventional concrete like uh, we need uh, to measure the setting time and we when we are talking about the conventional concrete mostly we are talking in in hours the setting time final setting time maybe 3 hours 6 hours depending on your mix proportion uh, in the case of 3d concrete printing let's assume like this is your uh, the the perimeter of this room that is your print path and you are printing next layer on the top of the first layer after 5 minute so on the first layer you are you are putting more stresses after every 5 minute here in the figure you can see uh, the printing rate x meter per hour uh, you are printing up to 90 minutes so you are putting on the first layer stresses the stresses are growing uh, compressive stress shear stresses uh, stiffness stresses th those are growing these stresses they should not exceed the evolving uh, structural build up of the material uh, there should be definitely some factor of safety Uh, uh this aspect of uh, 3d concrete printing like uh designing the uh, how, how many layers we can design the people are researching on it 
colleagues throughout the world, but uh, I will not focus more on that. What I want to say here from this slide, that uh, we need to quantify the structural build-up uh, in, 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 in minutes. We need some robust instruments which can sense the transition in the material in the seconds, if not in the seconds, the instruments can sense the structural build-up within the material at the scale of minutes. So, if you are printing the next layer on the top of the first layer within 30 seconds, so we need an instrument which can measure the transition within the material within this 30 seconds. So, this means we need very robust uh, instruments uh, for quantifying the structural build-up in the material. Uh, that is the sensitivity, like the instrument should be very sensitive, but at the same time, the construction industry also needs something from the instruments, like instrument should be highly portable, it should, we can put, uh, take it very easily, transportation should be very uh, easily, uh, easy, the instrument should have low cost, the test should be automated because 3D concrete printing, the whole spirit is automation, if uh, the test is a manual test, that, is, that doesn't fit with the spirit of uh, automation, but still if uh, we, uh, uh, people are involved in conducting the test, the people should be, minimum involvement should be there, the material requirement should be less, uh, the instrument should be very robust instrument, like if it's made up the glass and the instrument gets uh, drops out of hand, it's brittle material, it breaks, so that kind of a thing is not favor from uh, construction industry perspective. Uh, the once we get the data, then processing the data should be minimum. These are few requirements which the construction industry needs from the new test methods which we have to develop for quality control assessment of uh, 3D concrete printing. So, uh, these were the parameters uh, which, on which these parameters we assessed uh, eight different instruments, uh, how they perform, uh, how they comply, how they fulfill the requirements of the construction industry. Uh, for a specific printable mix. Uh, the results I'm going to show, they are just for a specific mix. You can use, take ideas from this for your uh, uh, mix, but I do not mean my results are the universal results uh, of these instruments. They are just my results, my analysis for these instruments. Uh, before going more, uh, before going to show the results of the instruments, like how much they are, uh, their sensitivity, uh, something we need to uh, consider here. Uh, here you can see the four different instruments, instrument four, instrument three, uh, the instrument one, and the inst uh, uh, instrument number two. And this is the age of the concrete. Uh, within the 90 minutes, the material gets hardened. Now, and these, these are uh, these instruments, when we measure the inst uh, material, the transition of the material, uh, the the value should high, like the, we are measuring the compressive strength, the compressive strength of the material will get high. So, we will, in the, in the instrument results, we will see the results get high. But in the, within the results, there is fluctuation. Uh, the, it doesn't fit the linear, there is always some dispersion in the data. Now, conventional concrete industry, we use R square, uh, as R square is very close to the 1, 0 0.99 or something, that means very close fit. But here, we also need to uh, take into account the slope of the uh, this line, the fitting line. So, R square doesn't get that thing. Uh, we need some new performance indicators, which can take the slope of the uh, fitting curve and also the dispersion in the, in the data. So, the instrument, to be sensitive, it should have a very high slope. At the same time, the, the dis dispersion in the results should be very low. Uh, there is, currently there is no such, uh, according to my knowledge, I cannot find any concept which can take into account both factors. So, uh, we come, we came with the concept of this uh, performance indicator, uh, performance index, by measuring the maximum value, uh, difference of the maximum value, minimum value, and dividing it by two times of the standard deviation, like this instrument number two, uh, the value is the 90 minutes, the value is the initial, the difference divided by the dispersion in the data, so that gives us some indicator about the performance of the instrument. So, this approach we used for assessing the quality, uh, the cap potential of any test method to capture the structural buildup. Uh, these are the results of the uh, instruments for the same mix during the 90 minutes you can see, 
Uh, here I would, uh, this is a rotational limiter which uh, our laboratory uh, is developed under the supervision of, of my professor. Uh, in our laboratory for research purposes we have developed it. So this is the end vein. Uh, this machine we also developed by ourselves under the supervision of professor. Uh, so you can see the uh, performance of the different, three different instruments for the same mix. Uh, the shear strength measured with the end vane with the rotational rheometer it almost reached up to uh, 7 kilopascal uh, 7 to 8 kilopascal and the compressive strength measured with the unexal uh, unconfined compressive strength is almost 3 times of the shear strength uh, the stiffness measured by the unexal uh, UUCT test almost uh, 10 to 15 times higher than the values of the compressive strength. Uh, squeeze flow, this is also a test of the uh, compressive strength, but uh, it, uh, the deformation mode and the stresses involved are a little different than the stresses involved in the UUCT. Uh, the, the results are also higher uh, than the results of the uh, uh, UUCT. Here you can see the slump and the flow table. The slump is, has been designed for the conventional uh, concrete, but because of familiarity of the construction industry, we need to know how uh, this instrument performs for the uh, printable mixes. So the mix which you have used, it is a, it is a stiff mix with, without any accelerator. So here you can see like uh, around 5 centimeter and after 90 minutes the drop in the uh, uh, slum uh, was almost about 2. Look, the, the measurement is found was about 3 centimeter. For the flow table, it was about uh, 20 uh, centimeter reduction in the spread up during the 90 minutes. Like be beyond the, I I'm talking about the 90 minutes because the 90 minutes is the time of the interest when we get the material for, for our mix when it comes out of the mixer. Uh, within 90 minutes, you have to use it. Otherwise, uh, the print quality becomes poor. We can see cracks, ruptures, voids in the print quality. Uh, these are the results of the uh, slow penetration test. Uh, it's also a newly new developed test method. There are some problems in this test method because it, it continuously measures the structural builder, but at the same time it also disturbing the material. Uh, so uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity. Uh, it is a very, very popular test method for the conventional concrete, uh, hardened concrete. Uh, researchers are also trying to put, uh, measure its potential to capture the structural buildup. For our mix, we were not satisfied for the performance of this instrument. Uh, these are the summary tables fitting equations how these uh, instruments perform. Uh, so this is the structural build-up rate coefficient of the T ratios, uh, 0.0713 kilopascal per minute increase in the yield space of the end range. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned before, like uh, to assess the potential of the test methods, we need new performance uh, indicators and the performance index which we uh, uh, adopted for our mix using these instruments and we ranked the instruments. We observed that the squeeze flow, uh, which measures the kind of gain strength, uh, it has high potential in all these eight candidate tests for our specific mix. Uh, then the slow penetration test and when in the case of the rheometer, uh, because we could not test it more than nine, uh, after 60 minutes, so my analysis is a little bit biased here. If we, uh, even if we change the vein size or the torque sensor, we can go up to 90 minutes, then the uh, performance of the rheometer will go a little bit high. But in my test conditions, we found the, uh, the range of the rheometer is on the fourth. Uh, the salam flow table, they performed not very good. Uh, uh, for the, uh, like, we need quality control sheets. Uh, we have te technical sheets, we also need te uh, quality control sheets for cross communication, uh, but between the different stakeholders uh, at the site. Uh, uh, so, it's not possible at the site to have all these instruments. It's also not possible for researchers to have all these instruments, but it, it's, the, it's possible that for we can develop for a specific, uh, especially commercial premixes, quality control sheets. Like in this uh, quality control uh, sheets, you can see uh, for our mix, uh, at the age of the 15 minute, uh, the performance 
when it is at the end vein, the value is around 2 point something, but uh, the corresponding value is the Salem test, flow table test, ultrasonic pulse velocity, uh, slow penetration test, squeeze flow use, uh, and uh, the other. So we can accommodate more instruments in these kind of uh, nomogram uh, sheets, and uh, we can use uh, sheets uh, for quality control purposes to verify the performance of a mix after, let's say we got the pre, uh, a mix after, uh, then we store it for six months, or then we want to check either our mix is still doing the same thing, we can use these kind of a sheets. Uh, with these sheets, definitely we need to take into account the data fluctuation. Uh, so, like uh, here, the mix which we are using, you can see the quality control sheets for every almost uh, 15 minutes, how the instrument, uh, how the material behaves on different instruments. Uh, to summarize up, uh, this, uh, this is the summary uh, of the, our analysis for the instruments. Uh, these are the, like, uh, these are the parameters on which we tested it. The red, uh, kind of, there is poor performance on those aspects. The green shows uh, the good. Like, uh, the, in the case of the end vein, it's a very, it's the end instrument. Uh, it is very uh, economical. Uh, you need it. Uh, a vein and you need a dig digital torque sensor or some spring based uh, torque sensor you need and you need a uh, little material depending on the vein size uh, as long as uh, the vein uh, size of the vein dimensions of the vein fulfill uh, the parameters like the uh, maximum size of the aggregate uh, and uh, the dimensions of the vein there is in the literature as already established, as long as we are fulfilling it, we can reduce the vein size and we can play around uh, with the material, we can use less material. So, like rheometer, we, the, the rheometer which we have used, about 20 liters of the material, that's too much material for one test. Uh, the, here, like color table, salams, you can see these instruments, they are very, they are very robust, uh, Rugged, uh, rugged instruments, like if it drops, there is a very low possibility that the steel serum mold will break. But in case of the uh, instruments like uh, which are sensors, uh, in case of the let's say rheometer, or uh, in case of the, the uh, UPV, ultrasonic pulse velocity, we have some sensors, if sensor drops, then the sensor breaks. Uh, so, the details of this, my presentation, you can see in this uh, published, recently published paper, it's open access paper, all the details and the uh, test methods are uh, given there. But uh, there is one limitation is still in these test methods. The material which we have used in these test methods doesn't represent the actual real 3D printed material. Uh, the real 3D printed material that passes through a hose, uh, depending on your printer, si printer size, it may be 7 centimeter, uh, 7 meter, 10 meter, at the construction side it can be up to 20 meter. During this pumping phase passing through the pipe, a lot of more changes happen, happen in the material. Like the material which we, when it, for our mixer, when it come out of the mix, mixer, the temperature was 28 degrees centigrade. And when we put it in the hopper, we pushed the material, pumped the material through 7 meter long hose. And the, when the material come out of the uh, nozzle, the temperature rose by about 10 degrees centigrade more from 27 to 38. So that's a lot of uh, increase in the temperature. Definitely the temperature gonna improve the, uh, gonna increase the structural buildup rate. Uh, so, uh, the problem with the, those uh, test methods that they do not use the real 3D printed uh, uh, sample. So we need new test methods. Uh, uh, in this regard we have developed a uh, new instrument under the supervision of Professor my professor. Uh, so the instrument utilizes the, the real 3D printed material. It, it, the instrument you can attach with a with any printer. Uh, you can attach the instrument with a robotic arm. You can also attach the, with a gantry. It can measure the compressive strength, shear strength, stiffness, uh, also the structural buildup, and it uses the real 3D printed layers. So we believe that it's a much more advanced test method as compared to the conventional test method. Uh, we have written, submitted a paper in the Journal of Built Environment, which is uh, under review. 
uh, you can see here the real 3D printed layers. So the instrument, the printer first prints a few layers, then the printer tests the material uh, structural buildup uh, in terms of the compressive strength, shear strength, stiffness. So in the previous instruments which I showed, most of those instruments they just measure one property except the uh, you need compressive strength and squeeze flow. They measure the green strength and stiffness, but the others, they do not measure it. Uh, acknowledgement, I'm, I'm thankful to my uh, supervisor, Professor Zheng Wen Kim. Uh, we have done this under his supervision. I'm also thankful to National Research Foundation of South Korea for funding my postdoc and also for funding this uh, research. Uh, so I'm open for your questions. If the site, uh, personally, I do not have, uh, uh, like uh, going to the site, testing the instrument. So uh, what we have done, yes, we have done in the laboratory, uh, keeping in mind what can be the potential scenario at the site. So, uh, yeah, like the tests which we have done, these are in the still in the controlled environment. That is a limitation of my study. You are right. Uh, thank you. I, what I get from you, a instant judgment of the material, right? Of the. Uh, yeah, uh, regarding regarding that, uh, the qual the geometry of the printed material when it comes out of the nozzle, does it conform to the dimensions of our uh, print intended print geometry? That that depends on the material rheology, but there are also some other parameters. Uh, regarding that, uh, we have some presentation. My professor will give a presentation uh, based on the using laser sensors. Uh, based on instant some judgment that can be helpful but still this technology is at the developing stage like we do not claim uh, you can instantly judge it <laughs> 